Ben Easley right now. He's a Wisconsin veterinarian and a mink production consultant. And I want to go back to our callers right now. We have Carlito in Madison. Hi, Carlito. Good morning. How are you? Well, what did you want to ask about? I'm kind of conflicted. Um, we used to have a ferret. Ferrets being the cousins of minks, you sort of become sympathetic to the mink. Badgers being our state mascot and the wolverine, its cousin being the Michigan mascot. I find these animals not just intriguing, but adorable. Um, I also find cows adorable, but we we eat the men and we drink the milk from the cows. Uh, how do we reconcile these feelings in our heart for these precious creatures of God and still sustain our families? How does one have generations of mink farming and put that together in their heart? Carlito, thank you for that call. Um, Dr. Easley, uh, what is your response? Well, um, yeah, and, that, and that's great uh, that uh, you know the, they have the, the compassion uh, for these animals and, and all animals in general. Um, uh, but again, we are trying to utilize these animals um, uh, for um, not only for their pelts, but also, uh, like I stated before, for for other uh, products that we can utilize. So, so we try not to uh, to waste anything uh, that's being produced. Um, uh, again, the great majority of these mink are being produced on on family farms. Um, they're very good animal caretakers. Um, they they enjoy working with the animals. Um, they think highly of them um, uh, and try to raise them in the best environment that they can. From that standpoint, uh, the Fur Commission USA sponsors uh, a tremendous amount of research to understand the best way to manage these animals. Um, and uh, give them the best environment and the best situation to, for us to raise them in um, so that, that they thrive in that environment. Um, we have been selecting these animals um, uh, from a breed standpoint, a breeding standpoint, genetically, to be able to thrive in these uh, management situations that we have them in, just like the rest of animal agriculture. So, um, again, we're trying to do the best we can you know, for this this livestock that we're raising, um, and it is a part of animal agriculture. Uh, it's just another um, commodity that that uh, we are we are uh, being able to derive from from the use of animals. Um, and and certainly there is uh, um, you know a, a major effort put forth to to understand uh, these animals and make sure that that we are raising them in the best environment that we can and handling them that way. Um, we have um, herd certification programs that are in place uh, that are third-party verified uh, that the farms have to meet uh, a very strict uh, set of protocols. Um, they're 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 certified by uh, by PACO, uh, uh, a certification process for um, for all welfare uh, programs. Uh, so I think the industry is uh, doing as well and, and, and really better than, than a lot of other animal agricultural uh, products that, that we're utilizing. We've had and, certification processes in place since 1985. And Dr. Easley, um, you know, I want to go back to a point you made just a little bit ago about uh, how mink are used, um, you know, the the whole mink. And you had said something about uh, that the mink uh, meat, the, the carcass was used for protein meals. Can you explain really quickly, is that for uh, animal feed or is that for human consumption? Well, that would be for animal feed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um Let's go to one of our callers really quickly right now. We have Kenneth in Janesville. Hi, Kenneth. Hello. Um, uh, hi. I was wondering if there are any uh, designers um, or manufacturers of uh, mink clothing in the state. 